article. Spring is here, which has many people wanting to start their spring cleaning projects. And a great place to start is the first thing you see when you walk in your entryway. Now, can mm -hmm. we get a ruling? Is it foyer or foyer? Are you a hillbilly if you say foyer? <laughs> I say because I feel I pretentious if I say foyer. No, I think that I think that's probably the correct spelling or pronunciation. But I mean, I think it's okay if you say the foyer, right? People know what you're saying. Right, but I've do heard they both. think you're a you're a dummy because you're saying foyer? That's a good question. Anyway, I don't know, but our Michelle Oliver turned to the experts to get their advice on how to organize the foyer or foyer <laughs> to make it functional for the whole family. Let's take a look. That's the The entryway is the first thing you see when you walk in. And if you're like me, the first thing you do is drop everything you have, whether it be your coat or the mail. But this ends up making the first thing you see in your home be a cluttered mess. So I talked to Lauren Combs with Neat Method Detroit to figure out how to make my entryway organized and functional. We want to make it functional for everyone that lives here and have a space for anywhere from our coats to our mail and everything in between. Where we can find, you know, pens and paper, um, right now masks and things like that that we need. And also to be able just to, to display things like schedules and things like that. So this area here is kind of my version of the drop zone. It's where I put my keys, my dog leashes and everything else. So I need to find a home for everything. We know where to drop it, but we know where to find it. So keys and, and masks and thing, things like that go inside of something that can hold it well. But again, there's a label on the outside, so we know what's in it. We have a, a mail drop in this zone, and when we find the time, maybe it's you know later at night, we grab the mail and then we go through it and we sort it from there. Because I have young kids, but there's also adults that live here, think about prime real estate, you know, what people can reach and uh, what you're using every day. So this is a problem I've had since I was a kid. I would always put my coat on the end of the banister. My mom hated it. So it's time I finally get my act together and put this stuff in the coat closet. So there is a closed uh, coat closet in here and that we decided was better used for adults that could more easily open a door and grab a coat. And so in, for the kids, we put up hooks so they can easily grab you know, their coats and things uh, right off their hooks. There's actually a lot of unused space in here. So with our mudroom, we have a bench and we designed it so that it was open on the bottom so we could have baskets to pull out where our everyday items would be. Things maybe have to shift. Priorities change, work might change, life might change, and it has to be sort of movable. So I have my shoes right by the door because they're the last things I put on before I leave and the first things I take off. But I don't think I need quite this many here. I'm gonna organize this and pare it down quite a bit. This space is our mudroom. It also becomes our drop zone. It is sort of our entry point in the house as well. For things to be able to shift and move around is helpful. Mm, okay, well, Michelle says that she's made these changes and they've been easy to maintain, so no more coats on the banister. If you need some help with your organization project, contact Neat Method Detroit. That whole piece had us philosophizing on neatness in the house. That was <laughs> excellent. Well done. All right.